dear students, we start with the chapter of uh, transport in humans. Now this is syllabus code uh, 5090 and uh, we are doing the O level biology syllabus and at the moment I am following the uh, 2021 syllabus which you are going to be examined for in a few months time. Now this chapter uh, what we need to understand is first what is in the syllabus of this chapter. Now, just as we look at the syllabus, the syllabus is very simple. It's transport in humans, chapter number seven, circulatory system. Learning outcomes, candidates should be able to describe the circulatory system as a system of tubes with a pump and valves to ensure one-way flow of blood. Then describe the double circulation, then name the main blood vessels. Now, it's only the main blood vessels that carry blood to and from the heart lungs, liver and kidneys. Please do not try to remember all the names of the different blood vessels so it's not in your syllabus. Then describe the structure and function of the heart in terms of muscular contractions. Then structure of arteries, veins and capillaries. Investigate the effect of physical activity on pulse rate. Now I'm just going through briefly the syllabus just to make you acquainted. You must read the syllabus once before you start studying the chapter and then you must review it again once you have completed revising the chapter. So that then you know which part of the syllabus you are not clear and which you need to go through and you need to uh, look up maybe some other book or you maybe need to talk to your teacher. So you can figure it out better and you can understand it a little better. So I will review this again at the end of this video or the other video because I don't know how many videos this chapter is going to be uh, having it having this chapter maybe one or two videos or maybe even three. So now we start with the chapter. Now in order to understand this chapter, the first and the most basic concept which you need to understand is that the heart is a hollow organ and it is divided by a septum in the middle by into a right and left side. Now if you pick up this paper on which you are drawing this and place it on your chest, this is the right side, this is your right side. So first get the right and the left correct. So right side and the left side. So this is the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. Now the heart is further divided into four chambers. Now the upper ones, I might have drawn them a little bigger, but the right, the upper ones are called the atrium. So this would be the right atrium and this would be the left atrium. So the upper chambers which are smaller are called the, uh, they're thin walled as well. The wall is also not very thick. So the wall is also thin. And their function is just to pump the blood into the ventricle. Now, the lower part, which has a very thick wall, it's thicker than, of course, and the left side is even thicker. It's very, very thick. So the left ventricle, so this would be the left ventricle. Please get the spelling right. So left ventricle. So you see we've got, sorry, this is not the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle, my mistake. So right ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. So this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle. Naturally, because this is the right side, if you pick your up, you pick this paper and place it on your chest, well, you know, this is your right side. Then this is the left atrium and this is the left ventricle. So left atrium and left ventricle. The heart is divided into four. So and the middle septum is the one which divides into right and left side. And sometimes, you know, babies are born with a hole here. So you see a lot of problems are going to take place. Actually, it's not a hole, it's actually a flap, which actually doesn't close, which is there present uh, before birth because the, the lungs of the baby don't work. So the blood is diverted from the right to the left side. And so that's why there's a flap. And usually what happens is that when a baby is born, this flap closes. And sometimes it doesn't close. And then of course you have babies born with, we say, a hole in the heart, which is a weird way to describe it but then we do surgery and we repair this and the baby we call blue baby because you see the deoxygenated and the oxygenated blood are mixing okay we'll talk about that a little later so structure of the heart now the heart acts as a pump 
and it has to pump blood to different parts of the body and the different parts of the body to which it pumps blood is number one the heart so this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is the right ventricle this is the left ventricle now the heart is the pump in the middle and it has to pump blood so to pump blood from the right ventricle the blood is carried to the lungs why because the right ventricle receives deoxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood has to be pumped to the lungs where it will be oxygenated and then when it's oxygenated it will be returned to the left atrium right and then it moves to the left ventricle and then it comes out of the left ventricle and goes to the entire body it goes to the entire body so what you need to understand is that the the blood from the heart first goes to the lungs then it gets oxygenated and is returned to the heart and then it goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle and then it goes out and goes to the body to the entire body and then of course it is returned it is returned the deoxygenated blood the deoxygenated blood is returned to the right atrium and we're going to name the valves later but i just want you to understand this so this is called the uh, but your your syllabus also says your syllabus says is that you understand that this is a double circulation this is a double circulation and the one which goes to the lungs is called the pulmonary circulation and the one which goes to the body here is called the systemic circulation systemic not systematic some of you spell this wrong is called the systemic circulation because it supplies all the systems of the body so the pulmonary circulation which is heart which is heart two lungs and back to the heart so pulmonary circulation and then from the heart to the body from the heart to the body and then back that is called the systemic circulation so this is a very very uh, i mean it's a very pathetic diagram i know that but this is explaining to you the point of the syllabus describe the double circulation in terms of a low pressure circulation so this pulmonary circulation is a low pressure one why because it just has to oxygenate so it's not a very high pressure it, the blood has to flow under low pressure to the lungs and then it has to be oxygenated and it has to be returned to the heart but the one which is supplying blood to the body is a very high pressure circulation why because the body cells have to receive blood and you know this as it is the blood is moving away from the heart so it becomes slower and slower and it has to be then taken back by a system of tubes okay now the system of tubes are the arteries veins and capillaries arteries veins and capillaries we'll talk about these in great detail in a minute and then another thing which you have is the valves and basically what the valves do is prevent backflow just you have on a in on a road you have one way traffic so you can only cars can only go in a certain direction and then the other side is the cars are coming in the opposite direction now this is to ensure that the traffic is smooth so that the people going to a certain place and then the people coming back from that certain place to come to other place so that the cars don't muddle up with each other so similarly you have valves which is going to prevent backflow so that the blood does not especially in your legs because when you stand up the blood pools down in your feet because of gravity so the veins in your legs have valves v veins v valves so please understand that and we go into more details in a little while now let's look at the structure of the heart in a little more detail and i have just drawn this heart and as you can see uh this will be the right side and this will be the left side so this will be the right atrium and this will be the left atrium now there is 
a line here which I'm drawing to separate the atria from the ventricles. Now, basically, there's no line here, but there are two valves here. And the valves on the right side are slightly different than the valves on the left side. The valves on the left side have two flaps. And I ask you to remember it like L, B, W. I mean, we talk about cricket. So we have V, it's a little weird. Left side has the bicuspid valve. Left side has the bicuspid valve. I know the W is a V here. So left bicuspid valve. The right side has three flaps. So you can see, I might not have drawn them very, very nicely, but there are three flaps here. One here, then there's another one, and then there's another one. And this is called, as it's called three, so it has to be something tri, like, you know, tricycle, when you got a little kid used to draw, drive a tricycle. So tricuspid valve. Cusp means the flaps, so tricuspid valve. So bicuspid valve on the left side. Everybody needs to remember this. You get this wrong very often. Left side is the bicuspid valve. LBW, left side bicuspid valve, right side tricuspid valve. And of course, this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle, right? Now these valves are held in place by chordae tendine. They are thread-like structures which hold it in place and these are called chordae tendine. A little difficult to remember, but tendons also are acceptable at times, tendon supporting valves. Now these, 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 these thread-like structures, which are the chordae tendine, are just holding the flap so that it don't turn inside out. They don't sort of flap into here, into the, into the atria. So they're just held there down. So you have to understand is what we mean by the flaps being held in place. So chordae tendine, right side, right side has the tricuspid valves. Left side has the bicuspid valves. So this is just a brief overview of the different uh, wordings that we are going to be used. Bicuspid valve and tricuspid valve. Left side bicuspid valve. Right side tricuspid valve. Now this is a diagram showing a section through the heart. Now it's a little difficult. I know you find it a little difficult. It's not very easy for you all to comprehend this. Now, you can see here right ventricle, right atrium. Please, every first of all, identify the right atrium and the right ventricle. That's a simple. Let's simplify things. Then the vessel coming in from the top is called, why is it coming top from? It's coming from the head and the neck and the upper part of the body, and that's called the superior vena cava. The one which is coming from the lower part of the body is called the inferior vena cava. So you have to know these two names superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. And what are they bringing? They are bringing deoxygenated blood. They are bringing deoxygenated blood. So the oxygen has been taken up and is loaded with carbon dioxide. So now you know deoxygenated blood has to go where? It has to go to the lungs. So it has to go to the lungs to be, you can say purified, I don't agree with that name, but to take up the oxygen and give up the carbon dioxide. So from deoxygenated, it is going to become oxygenated. Now the vessel, anything to do with the lungs, anything to do with the lungs, a doctor who examines people with lung problems is called a pulmonologist. Pulmonologist. So anything to do with the lungs is pulmonary. So pulmon, pulmonary, so I'm not saying pulmonary, pulmonary spelling with the pronunciation would be wrong. So then the vessel which is going to be taking blood away, so anything which is taking blood away is the artery. Anything which is taking blood away is the artery. So 
here we come up with the pulmonary artery so this is the pulmonary artery which is coming out of the right ventricle pulmonary artery coming out and why does it immediately divide into the right side and the left side the reason is because god has been kind to you and given you two lungs so there's a right lung and there's a left lung so this goes to the two lungs i'm just drawing it very very diagrammatically the two lungs so what we have to understand is that the vessel which comes out of the right ventricle the vessel which comes out of the right ventricle is called the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery comes out here divides into right side and the left side so there is a right pulmonary artery and there is a left pulmonary artery and it goes to the right and the left lung so right and left pulmonary artery now here when it goes to the lungs it's going to be oxygenated and that is going to be coming back from the lungs so again we use the word pulmonary but now these are called pulmonary veins so you can see there are four pulmonary veins one two and these are opening here this is where they are opening and there's one coming here at the back there's a coming here now this comes behind it and comes here and opens here so these are the ones which come behind it and open so i'm just so pulmonary vein but i mean you just have to remember two pulmonary veins don't confuse yourself so two pulmonary veins coming from the two lungs and the pulmonary veins are coming here and opening into the left atrium so the oxygenated blood is being returned to the heart and is being brought to the left atrium then the blood flows into the left ventricle and here from the left ventricle comes out the biggest artery of the body which is called the aorta and forms this arch and this is a very famous aortic arch and you should be able to pick this up immediately and you can see all the arteries of the body arise from the aorta all the arteries so these are the ones which are going to the head and the neck you don't have to know their names but we have to know certain names which i'll just talk to you and then this aorta goes behind the heart and then comes out here and then is going to go down into your abdomen and then down and then is going to divide into your legs and become the leg arteries so i'm going to recap this in a while so that you can again then understand it a second time now this is a front view of the heart and i want you to see it for a reason because there is a blood vessel which is coming and supplying the you can see this blood vessel on the top of the surface of the heart and these blood vessels are called they're not labeled these are called coronary arteries why because these coronary arteries supply blood to the muscle in the wall of the heart so coronary arteries there will be right coronary artery left coronary artery and so on and so forth now what i want you to look at is you can see very prominently you see this is the aorta the arch of the aorta this is the arch of the aorta very prominent structure then you can see this is the superior vena cava which is this one which is coming here into the right atrium and then this is the inferior vena cava which is coming from the back and then you can see this is the, the from his side is going to arise the pulmonary pulmonary artery which is going to go into pulmonary artery in this pulmonary two sides and then you can see the pulmonary veins coming here right and then you see you can see this aorta coming out here this is the aorta so the aorta has gone behind the heart and then it's come down and it'll go down and then it's going to divide into your legs right as it goes down and reaches your tailbone and then it's going to divide into the legs so uh, just an overview of it again in another diagram and i'll be doing a number of other diagrams to make you understand this a little better when i'm showing the circulation i want you to be knowing certain vessels now i want you to identify number 1 the inferior and the superior vena cava then entering here then out coming this which is the pulmonary artery this one is the pulmonary artery coming out here this been labeled here pulmonary artery then this goes to the lungs and the lungs it is uh, oxygenated and then you can see pulmonary vein 
and the pulmonary vein returning to the right, right side and then you see this is the aorta this is the aorta coming out here and here and here so aorta and then from the aorta arise the main vessels which you have to understand is the main vessels which have been shown is number one renal artery which goes to the kidneys and then there's the renal vein and then of course there's the capillary network and then of course we have to know there is uh, another vessel which is the hepatic artery which they haven't labeled here but you can see the hepatic portal vein the hepatic portal vein joins the intestine with the liver and this is what you need to remember which we studied in an earlier chapter hepatic portal vein and then of course there's a hepatic artery and there's an hepatic vein we have to know it you only have to know the names to the lungs which one are the uh, name of the blood vessels from the heart lungs liver and kidney heart lungs liver and kidney now uh, you should be able to identify each one from the heart of course the coronary artery and then the heart has the aorta is the biggest artery then lungs pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein then liver hepatic artery and hepatic vein and hepatic portal vein and the kidney the simple is the renal artery and the renal vein so i'm just going to recap that again in another diagram uh, another diagram showing you the basic circulation and you can see the right side of the heart the right atrium the right ventricle please identify first the left atrium and the left ventricle then you can see the aorta, the pulmonary vein, which is a diagrammatic representation from the lungs, pulmonary artery going to the lungs, pulmonary vein bringing blood back to the heart, and then the valves, which is the tricuspid valve, which is on the right side, and the bicuspid valve, which another name of it is also the mitral valve, but we don't use this word anymore, but in some books it's still given, and this is the one which is on the left side mitral valve or the bicuspid valve so you have to know these two names as well uh, but i'm okay with just if you know the bicuspid valve as you look at another diagram of the heart anatomy which is a slightly more profound one i like this one a little better i want you to be looking at all the ones which you've just talked about left atrium left ventricle first identify the ones the main chambers then the right atrium right ventricle then you can see this is the main septum which is dis which is dividing the heart into right and the left side then you have the tricuspid valve which i told you was on the right side and then you can see here you have the mitral valve or which is also called the bicuspid valve i don't like using the word mitral anymore more we don't use it anymore so bicuspid valve which is on the left side then i want to talk about two valves one is called the aortic valve so at the base of the aorta, this is what you have here. At the base of the aorta, you have a valve which is called the semilunar valve. Semi means half and moon, semilunar valve. Now it's also called the aortic valve because this is the only valve in an artery. And you know aorta is the main artery of the body. So the aortic valve, you've had a question in the exam also on this is uh, which arteries have valves? So it's the uh, aorta which has the valves and the other one is the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery which is arising from the right ventricle this is the right ventricle from which the pulmonary artery arises and you see see these three flaps so the semilunar valves have three flaps semilunar valve have three flaps tricuspid valve has three flaps and the bicuspid valve has two flaps. So everybody has to be clear about this. Semilunar valve has three flaps and I'm going to show you a transverse section of the heart in which you can see that very clearly. So again, labeling aorta, the arch part. So you can see this arch part is the aorta and there's all these vessels coming out of it which are going to the head and the neck. And then this is the superior vena cava which is coming to the right atrium and they have not shown you <clears throat> the inferior vena cava no they haven't shown that then pulmonary artery then the pulmonary veins which are bringing heart here back to the left atrium 
and then the left atrium pumps blood and the blood goes into the bicuspid valves open and the blood goes into the ventricles and then of course it is pumped into the aorta so once more the cardiac cycle the deoxygenated blood entering into the left atrium then blood left uh, sorry right atrium then right ventricle then it goes out into the pulmonary artery so right atrium first then right ventricle, then pulmonary artery. Then it goes, gets oxygenated. On this side, it is going to return to the pulmonary veins, left atrium, left ventricle, and then aorta. So very quick recap. Right atrium, the vena cava, superior inferior vena cava, bring blood to the right atrium. The right atrium pumps blood into the right ventricle. <clears throat> and then it goes into the pulmonary artery and goes to the lungs. It returns from the lungs in the pulmonary vein, which brings blood to the left atrium, goes into the left ventricle, and out goes the aorta, and the blood is pumped to the entire body through the major artery of the body, which is the aorta. Now let's move towards the different types of blood vessels that we have. Just a quick overview. Blood vessels are of three types. Number one, arteries. Number two, veins. And then the thing, the small branches which connect them is called the capillary network. Now, the main vessel is called the artery, this one here. And then you have an arteriole, which is a narrower branch of it, which is coming out of the artery. Arteriole. Artery, arteriole, then the capillary network. So, first artery. Number two, arteriole. Number three, capillary network. Number four, venule. So the capillary network then forms a venule. This is a venule. And then the venules join to form a vein. So this is the sequence. Number one, the artery, the biggest artery of the body is the aorta. And all the arteries of the different organs of the body arise from the aorta. So artery, then arteriole, then capillary network, then venule, and then vein. So you must know this sequence and you must understand this and you must understand that the Artery is a very thick, elastic, muscular wall. Why? Because they're carrying blood at a very high pressure. The reason is that the left ventricle of the heart carries, is pumps blood with a great force because it's very thick. Left ventricle pumps blood with a lot of force. That is why the left ventricle wall is thicker than the right ventricle wall. So, left ventricle pumps blood with a greater force. So the aorta carries blood at high pressure. All the arteries arise from the aorta, so the arteries carry blood at high pressure. Veins, by the time the blood has reached the veins, it has lost most of its pressure because number one, it's flowing away. Number two, some of the tissue fluid has leaked out. So we talk about that a little later on and we discuss that. So basically, I want you to know the blood vessels, artery, arteriole, artery, arteriole, capillary, venule and vein. Now we will continue this chapter in the second video which will explain this further and maybe I think we might have to need another video as well. So probably there will be three videos for this uh, chapter and let's see how we go. Thank you everybody.